Today we're going to look at something called appraisal. Um, you are appraised uh, regularly. Uh, you will have, uh, I assume in your scope, some reports which you receive. My school students receive four reports a year. Um, there are uh, regular parent-teacher days. Um, and you may feel that a judgment is being uh, made on you. And when you come to, if you come to parent-teacher day, which I recommend you do, uh, maybe the teacher is going to give you targets which you have to aim towards. And so it's similar for me in my position. Uh, I'm involved in an appraisal process. So I have five people inside my department um, and I meet them at the start of the year to come up with objectives for them. Uh, we meet during the year and at the end of the year we see, did you meet your targets? Uh, similarly, I have a line manager. I meet them at the start of the year. I come up with my objectives, which we agreed to. I meet them during the year and at the end of the year we have a, a meeting where we see, did I actually meet my objectives? Obviously that is there to try and make sure that I am motivated. Now, the president who initially and throughout may well be involved in discussion on past and present performance. So for example, maybe my students didn't do well on a particular part of an exam paper. Maybe paper one for a standard level. And I think, ah, this year I'm going to focus on paper one for standard level. Then maybe we look at people's uh, strengths and weaknesses. As you can see, maybe next year my particular weakness might be improving my uh, PPTs. Uh, then obviously we need to put future uh, plans for training uh, into uh, place. So for example, if next year I was going to be teaching uh, economics IB, I haven't taught it now for a few years, maybe I would need to go on some uh, training. Uh, and then we need to make sure that the objectives are set in such a way that they can actually be met throughout the time period. No point in giving me uh, objectives which are going to take five years. I can have a new job in 12 months, and therefore the objectives would be meaningless. All right? Therefore, the targets should be smart, and they are obviously specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-related. Now, appraisals, quite often appraisals, do. they are meant to, to motivate workers, but quite often they don't. And quite often they don't because the worker and the manager just views them as something is okay, we'll come up with targets at the start of the year because we have to, and we'll meet at the end of the year because we have to, and it becomes a tick box exercise to show that an appraisal has taken place. Therefore, nobody really takes it seriously. If workers are, let's say, like a theory expert, if you go to YouTube, you, take, you write in the office, keep the appraisal, you'll see this as an example, uh, a very funny example, of someone who basically doesn't care about their job. Um, and isn't interested in improving. All right. If you, uh, the, the manager meets with their, their employee A and they start commenting on how well the employee is doing, saying uh, you're not doing very well, obviously the employee can become very defensive. It's quite a natural instinct. Therefore, what you find that happens is you get lots and lots of conflict between the managers and the workers. As I said a minute ago, uh, if targets aren't smart, then people will think, well, why am I doing this target? Uh, if I can't reach the target, what is the point in having this target? What's the point in me, uh, the worker having to try and reach a target which I don't agree to? If it's just coming down from senior management, and I don't think I can achieve it, and I don't agree to it, and I don't think it's important. And if there's a lack of contact during the period, of time, uh, period so if we have, the, say, the average school year starts in mid August, finishes at the end of June for me. If I meet a member of staff in my department August 16th and then don't meet them again to discuss their, uh, uh, their, their targets, if I don't meet them again until say June 15th, that's 10 months. I should check in with them periodically just to see how they're working towards those targets. Okay, because if you don't check in, that's maybe a sign to the workers that the, the manager doesn't care. And obviously it's very, very important that the manager shows some uh, Involvement, some sort of interest, because if they don't, then that maybe is another sign that the appraisal process is a waste of time. There are four different types of appraisal. The first one is called formal appraisal. This is a kind of like uh, an ongoing process whereby the manager uh, works alongside the, the workers on a day to day basis and they can see what's going on, what, what progress is being made, and they can make their own judgments as to what uh, uh, the strengths, wealth, strengths, and weaknesses. Of the person are. Okay, and most of your teachers will do that on, uh, on a day to day basis as well. The sum of appraisal, however, that takes place more formally where you sit down uh, with the workers. So, for example, uh, at the end of the year, I will take each of the, the, the five workers in my department 
and we will go to Starbucks and we'll go somewhere uh, different and we will sit down and we'll talk through their year, uh, the targets, what's going well, what's not going well. I try to make sure that I only speak 10% of the time, that anything I ask is just like a, to try and guide the conversation. But 90% of the talking will come from the, the, uh, one of the people I work with. Um, then we have self appraisal. If workers are involved in self appraisal and they're coming up with their own targets, uh, that's okay. The person who's best equipped maybe to, to comment on what they need to improve is probably the worker themselves. But if they're then coming up with their own target, the manager's role is then to make sure that the targets are meaningful and obviously that they're smart targets. Then finally, we have 360 degree appraisal. Uh, some of you may well want to be involved in the appraisal of your teachers, to praise them, or sometimes not praise them. Uh, so I have five people uh, who are in my department. Uh, they could be involved in my appraisal process instead of just being my line manager. Um, I share an office with the head of humanities. I share an office with the head of mathematics. They may well have comments about how I interact with people. Uh, my students may well have comments about uh, how I perform. I know some schools uh, not far away from here where the students are involved in the, the appraisal of their, the teachers. And having spoken to some of those teachers, they are uncomfortable with that process because they feel that, that unless the students are giving them very, very good grades, they may not get their contracts renewed. And as a result, then perhaps to try and make the lessons fun, 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 maybe the lessons aren't as you know, geared towards a high quality learning as they could be. Because the teacher is always thinking, I need to get a good appraisal from the student. Or otherwise, I have senior management coming knocking on my door saying the students are not happy. Okay, so there is also the IB coordinator and the IGCC coordinator, um, who I work quite closely alongside because their office is right beside mine, and so I talk to them quite often. So they could be involved in my appraisal. Okay, now. A study on the 360 degree appraisal, how useful is it? Okay. What it basically found is that subjects known for one to three years are the most accurate, followed by those known for less than one year, followed by those known three to five years, and the least accurate being those known for more than five years. All right. And here would lie, it would lie the problem from my department. Um, two of the teachers are now at their 10th year at the school. I am in my 15th year at the school. Um, I've managed these people, two of these people, for 10 years. Another member of staff has been here for eight years, and uh, the other two members of staff, one an economic teacher, one a business teacher, have been here for four years. But what may happen is that the uh, appraisal they would give me would be very, very positive, because we have very, very good working relationships. Uh, they may be less willing to point out my faults. Okay, so uh, that would be maybe a uh, bad thing about uh, 360 degree appraisal. All right. But nevertheless, appraisal does play a vital role for businesses because they want to make sure their workers have things to work towards and keep them motivated. If workers aren't motivated, obviously, then it's going to be more difficult for the uh, organization to meet its objectives. And that's all today.